Let's just clean house. We could have tried to attack, but I bet he would have just jump blocked. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking time to watch Hello Good Game. Today we're playing Esper Blink. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon and send this video out to a friend who you think might find value in it. We're gonna take a look at the deck list, talk about some strategy, get into some gameplay footage, then come full circle with some closing thoughts. Let's get into it. The deck starts off with a two drop called the Charming Prince. This creature is a two two, and when he enters the battlefield, you get to choose one, either scry two, gain three life, or exile another target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Flibble flip the lost. This is a one one, so not very good value here. However, when he enters the battlefield, draw a card. If it entered the battlefield from the library or was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. So that's kind of unique. And when flibble flip becomes the target of a spell, shuffle flibble flip into its owner's library. We have three copies of Thought Erasure. This is a sorcery card. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Surveil one. We have three copies of Tyrant Scorn. This is an instant spell. Choose one. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less. Return target creature card to its owner's hand. So that's very unique as well. Moving on to our three drops, we only have one, and it's a Planeswalker, Teferi the Time Raveler. This comes in with four loyalty and has a static ability of each opponent can cast spells only anytime they could cast a sorcery. So no instances, nothing on the stack, anything like that. Plus one, until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they have flash, which is quite unique. And minus three, return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand, and then you draw a card. Thassa Deep Dwelling. This is our main combo piece here. A legendary enchantment creature, God, 6-5, indestructible, costs 4. As long as your devotion to blue is less than 5, Thassa isn't a creature. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. We can also pay 3 plus an islands for 4 to tap another target creature. We have 3 copies of Elite Guard Mage. This is a 2-3 with flying for 4. When Elite Guard Mage enters the battlefield, you gain three life and draw a card. We have three copies of Belhaun Basilica, another four drop, whoops, another four drop containing two planes and two swamps. When Belhaun Basilica enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. It itself is a three four. We have three copies of Kaya's Wrath, the same mana requirements of Belhaun. However, this is a sorcery card and it destroys all creatures. You gain life equal to the number of creatures you controlled that were destroyed this way. We have one single copy of Massacre Girl for five. She's a 4-4 four, four with Menace, and when she enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. We also have a single copy of Elspeth Conquers Death. This is an enchantment saga for five. Exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater for turn number one. Non-creature spells your opponent cast cost two more to cast until your next turn for turn number two. And return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a 1-1 counter or a loyalty counter on it for turn three. Moving on to our six drops, we have one copy of Dream Trawler. This costs two planes, two islands, and two colorless. Has flying lifelink, is a 3-5. However, whenever you draw a card, Dream Trawler gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. And you draw on your upkeep, so he'll have 4-5. And then whenever Dream Trawler attacks, draw a card, so he'll go to 5-5. Five, five. And you can also discard a card. Dream Trawler gains hexproof until end of turn. Tap it. We have two copies of Command the Dread Horde. This is a sorcery for six. Choose any number of target creatures and or Planeswalker cards in Graveyards. Command the Dread Horde deals damage equal to the total converted mana costs of those cards. Put them into the battlefield under your control. A quick note on this, that you will pay the life before any of the enter the battlefield effects trigger, so you cannot kill yourself and bring yourself back alive like you would with life gain during combat damage. Agent of Treachery for seven. Oh my gosh. Uh, a <laughs> human rogue, we all know Agent of Treachery. He's a 2-3. When he enters the battlefield, gain control, target permanent. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. Moving on to our lands, we have a single Castle Ardenvale, a single Plains, a single Islands, two Swamps, four Hallowed Fountains, three Temple of Enlightenments, four Godless Shrines, and two Temple of Silences, two Temple of Deceits, one, four Watery Graves, and two Fabled Passages. 
So quite a stock of rare lands involved with this deck and the rest of the deck is almost all rare as well. So by no means a budget deck. This is a maybe a tier two deck, I'm assuming, maybe tier 2.5 until we uh, really dial it in. I really liked this deck. I had a lot of fun playing it. Let's get into some strategy before we check out some gameplay footage. So I'm going to touch on some strategy points here. I'm sure I'm going to leave out a few. Be sure to correct me in the comments below, you guys. I'd really appreciate that. So you can tell what the deck's overall strategy is just from going through the deck list. It focuses on blinking your creatures in and out, as the name states, Esper Blink, right? That's a deep dwelling. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. It's like Prince Charming's third ability, but it's doing it at every end step, which is really cool. We want to utilize this and Prince Charming's third ability on our other creatures, such as Elite Guard Mage, Bell Haunt Basilica, Flip Flip the Lost, and even Prince Charming himself, right? This is gonna gain us extra value. And when you're playing against an opponent, it really does come to who can squeeze the most value out of those lemons, right? We have cool things like Thought Erasure, Tyrant Scorn to upset our opponent's style of play. Only one copy of Elspeth Conquers Death, so make sure you save it for something important. We do also run Command the Dread Horde, which brings all of our creatures back from the graveyard. We touched on how you need to have life to pay for those creature cards and the life gained when those creature cards enters the battlefield will not help you, so you cannot go into the negatives and then into the positives. You have to stay positive the entire time. Bellhawk Basilica is nice because it'll help you not only gain life, but your opponent will discard. Elite Guard Mage allows you to draw and gain life, which is great. And Prince Charming allows you to scry and gain life, which is also amazing. Flipple Flip is just a draw. However, in best of one, we are flooded with aggro decks, you guys. So if we can provide some longevity with all of that life gain, we're gonna do just fine. It's gonna be absolutely a wonderful time. We also have things like Kaya's Wrath to clean up the field, right? If that mono red decks or the other aggro decks build up, boom, wipe them out and we restart. Same situation with Massacre Girl. We just have to make sure that the minus ones stack up to kill all of the creatures on the battlefield. So it's a little more specific as opposed to Kai's Wrath and a little bit more expensive, but you do get to keep a 4-4 with Menace on the field after, which is quite nice. Obviously, Dream Trawler is broken. Just get that on the battlefield and try to survive. Make sure he has a companion with it so he don't have to sacrifice it because even though he has Hexproof, he's still prone to sacrifice right? Because the sacrifice card's not targeting it. You are having to target which card to sacrifice, which is a big time bummer. Obviously, Teferi shuts down a lot of the other decks. That's it, you guys. We have a Castle Ardenvale, which you can make into one white creature tokens, which is really cool. So that's going to give you the longevity. And then with Thassa Deep Dwelling, once we do get our Agent of Treachery out, we're just going to bounce him over and over and over again until our opponent is absolutely broken to pieces. So that was our general strategy to the deck. Let me know how I did in the comments below. With that all being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon as well. Send this video out to a friend who you think might have found value in it, or just a friend who enjoys Esper. Again, we're live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. You can also join the Discord if you'd like to continue this conversation throughout your day. We have over 350 members now, so it's pretty banging. Uh, we have thousands of dollars, no joke, you guys, thousands of dollars in giveaways in the contest and giveaways tab, so check that out. Start participating in those. We're just trying to grow and flourish a beautiful community. We also have monthly brawl tournaments the last weekend of every month. Go ahead and check that out as well. Link in the Discord, link also in the description below. Most importantly, if you're a free-to-play player and you cannot afford all these cool cards, check out our free-to-play beginner's handbook where I have dozens of decks for you guys to check out that are completely artisan. They have zero rares, zero mythics, and then we have upgrade guides and tutorials for each of those decks to work some rares and mythics in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's get into today's gameplay footage. All right, you guys, we have a new flavor of Esper not actually ever seen by myself before. Calling it Esper Blink. And, you know, we got our, our boy Jace in the house. He's going to help us get there. Let's throw our blue-black combo out first. It's going to activate our Tyrant Scorn when we combo down with our Godless Shrine. So Kai's Wrath is really, really good here.
Yeah. Planes goes out. Um. Probably just nuke this t a steam can, or should we, uh... Yeah. We have a second fairy. Let's just get that draw. We really want the land card. There it is, boys. So now we know that we can hold off. We can let him go wide, and uh, we're going to have access to that Kaya's Wrath. Fairy goes down, and he takes a swamp. That's uh, well, not the best, but not the worst. We are looking for our Thassa. Light the stage. I'm gonna let him go one more turn. Right, we do have our Tyrant Scorns up, which is gonna be quite helpful. Let's let it go. He grabs a land again, so that's not ideal, but not the worst. As long as it's not one of our castles, right? Again, make sure you guys uh, hit us up, and then we can chat while we uh, wait for our opponents. We have a link in our Discord or a channel in our Discord filled with gamer tags from our members. All right, let's take our turn. Let's just wipe it. 12 is getting pretty low. We can go uh, Command the Dread Horde for 6 if we want. Only 12 life though, so uh, not the best. Double Steamkin. We're actually okay with that. We're going to play our Teferi. Plus our Teferi. Actually, no, we're going to minus our Teferi. Let's take that draw. And we can bounce his Steamkin with a Tyrant Scorn. Or just protect it. Let's just protect it. He can deal damage to our Charming Prince if he wants. Let's scry two. That's more important at this point. Oh, well, I like Elspeth Conquers Death, but is he going to have anything for us to play? Let's keep the Teferi. ECD can go to the bottom. Another Steamkin, totally acceptable. Oh, he does have the removal. So, in this case, we should have held up our Tyrant Scorn, potentially. Oh no, he's just going in big, boys. Getting hit for four. Command the Dread Horde's not really an option here. More creatures, please. No light at the stages. No! Now we need just lands from him. Uh, he did get a Scorch Spitter. He's down to one card, though, so this is kind of uh, where this deck falters. He wasn't able to close out in one drastic turn. Perfect. He gets all his cards on the field. Absolutely. One might argue that he should have done that first. Let's just end this man's career. And, well, he's got haste. 
right? If he drew another Legion's War Boss, that's something I probably wouldn't like very much. Belhan Basilica is such a nice top deck. We gained three life. Whoops. Okay, so I like this hand. We get to scry off the start. We have our Prince Charming if we need it. And then we can even to ferry down lands I do like. And we have our Thassa in pocket. So this could be the round where we're able to execute. Love Struck Beast, totally fine. Let's pay life. Get this blocker out. Let's take a little scry. Land can go. Tyrant Scorn can stay. That kills his Love Struck Beast. Edge Wall Innkeeper, it also destroys. Let's pay life. Bounces innkeeper. I am not sit this one out. Let's try this. Get the lands. No attacks. Because he can't play his love struck beast on top of his innkeeper now. He's one land back. Plays his Uro, totally acceptable. That's a nice progression for us. I mean, it allows him to ramp, right? But we still basically end off where we need to be. So I want to kill it, but I also want to play... Our girl. Let's do it. Fairy goes up. I've got time. No attacks. And then Thassa is going to bounce. Our charming prince. I like the scry, but I also don't mind gaining a ton of life for when we pop Command the Dread Horde. I guess we should focus on finding it first, though. Let's toss the land. That's a really good thing that we did that. Now, he could take our Teferi down to one, but he offers up his Edgewall Innkeeper at that point. So I think our Teferi stays safe at this point. Beanstalk Giant looks for lands. Totally acceptable. Thanks for the Twitch Prime subscription, Sinister Blades. Appreciate you. Okay, gets the Borrower in to kill my Teferi. I like it. Totally acceptable. He's not executed off of uh, his Edgewell Innkeeper yet. And we're sitting at four. We go to five. The discard just nullifies his draw, plus we get a creature to defend. So that's nice. Let's put in our second blue source. Gain another three life here and have our opponent discard another card, you guys. Oh my gosh, that's nice. A secondary innkeeper, I'll admit that's really nice as well. Into a love struck beast. Double draw. So he's basically nullified what we just did. Very cool. He can't attack now. Gets to put in a land. One, two, three, four, five. This will be six. The next one is seven. Am I right? Let's take the scry. Looking for Command the Dreadhorde. 
Teferi's nice. Full of flip's nice too. Global flip can go to the bottom though. No attacks. I guess we'll do our Bellhaunt Basilica again. Grab the life, get the discard. Ooh, it was an Uro. Very nice. Four cards in his graveyard, including both of the Uros. We're dropping our Agent of Treachery next turn. And our Thassa has Indestructible. But he's going to need some way to deal with that efficiently. We're just going to destroy this Lovestruck Beast. We like to keep our health, even though we've got a lot of it. Again, we could have held that up for the chance when he plays an Ember Cleave, but he's going to need another Mountain for that, so... I don't think it much matters. Let's take his Beanstalk Giant. That's going to be game. Attack with our Bellhaunt Basilica. Now we flash our Agent back. Taking that red source. He can keep his edge wall innkeepers. <laughs> I don't mind. Brazen Borrower on the Beanstalk Giant back to his hand. I like it. He doesn't get to take his mountain that way, though. And he has four land left. Not enough for Uro. He's missing the second island. We do get the Fertile Footsteps, though. And he does look for another mountain, you guys. So that's the hot pocket. We want that mountain. Good game. Okay. I guess not something we typically keep, but let's just flip, flip some lands on the field. Oh my gosh. No. Not on three lands. We're not taking something worth seven. Yeah, definitely submit the clips, boys. All right, our opponent's just chillaxing. Interesting. Well, I guess this is the perfect time for a smoke. Makes for great gameplay footage, right? Okay, so we can get rid of Annex, right? Dream Trawler should save us from the rest. I've never seen someone take their time with a red deck so much. This guy is in some, some zonage. It's an attack where you have first strike. Light up the stage. Sometimes, you know, when you see people playing chess against themselves and it seems like, wow, how is this guy doing this? I think they just get to a position where it would be better to play against yourself than whatever this is. All right, he is indeed thinking. Let's think, uh, see about what. You know what I mean? What was he thinking about? He's thinking about war bosses. He's thinking about light up the stage. Why did he keep a single mana up? Uh, I'll never know. Let's cut him off at the source. Massacre Girl does just fine. Uh, we love that. 
I guess we'll just leave her at the top, get the Scryland out tapped. No attacks. <clears throat> so he's going to play the land, play his Legion War Boss here. And that's a big attack. Probably hold his Scorch Spitter back. He wants to drop his Torbrand for that. Really? Um, I do not mind trading. Let's pay two life here and get a nice big old blocker out on the field. Get rid of one of those cards he's got in his hand. Must be an Embercleave. I wonder what it is. So we're ready to block and kill anything. Sure. He gets two damage in. That's really nice. We're going to be able to Elspeth his uh, Torbrand after we wipe the field. Oh, we don't have the second mana for that. Okay, well, let's just draw the land here. No attacks, and we'll get him next turn. Even if he drops his Torbrand, um, we're just now not having to deal with it after. Blocking all the damage we can. Down to 12. Ooh, he plays light up the stage. Gets an annex, which means we absolutely have to wipe. Let's just clean house. We could have tried to attack, but I bet he would have just chump blocked. Our opponent can go. We can Elspeth his Annex. Shocking to our face to a light at the stage. Interesting. So Annex is gone. We don't have to deal with that anymore. We're free to Dream Trawler. My apologies, friend, but you did misplay. Let's just get rid of that Torbrand right out of his hand. That's about the coolest thing we could do. Prince Charming. I mean, I don't mind the life gain, but we should probably just scry. The Guard Mage can stick to the top. And let's finish this one out. He has maybe a, a heart fire. Oh, the Archon of War. Interesting. What does he think of this, though? Right, we're just going to gain some life here.
good game. This was Esper Blink, one of my favorite Esper decks that I've played recently. Absolutely loving it. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. A couple quick reminders before we close off for the day. I'm live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. You can also join the conversation in our Discord if you'd like to continue that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you who continue to spend your time with me. I cannot ever or will ever be able to express my gratitude other than saying thank you a gazillion times. All right, you guys, same time, same place tomorrow. We'll if see you liked there. today's video, be sure to check out some of our other content. We've built playlists for our guides for beginners, and then we also have our greatest hits, which is a collection of our most popular videos. You can also subscribe if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. So do that, tap that like button, send this out to a friend who you think might be interested in it as well, and have a great day.